Hello and welcome to the Women's Network. I'm Elke and I'm your hostess. We have a wonderful show for you in store tonight, so uh, please do not leave the room because you will be missing something great. Uh, for those of you who have watched me the last uh, few weeks, you have noticed that we have uh, touched upon some very serious women's issues. And uh, I thought it's about time to change all that for at least today. And uh, we will have a fun time. And we will go uh, into the world of theater. And therefore, I have invited two wonderful women that are right now in the uh, production of uh, Gertrude Stein and Company, a wonderful play right here in Hollywood. And uh, they are with me this evening to enlighten you a little bit about Gertrude Stein and her companion, Alice B. Toklas, as well as their own life in the theater, film, and so on. So uh, let me introduce you to my guest, First of all, uh, Lois Viscoli. Yes, yes. Very nice to meet it's you. Very, it's a pleasure to be <laughs> here, Elka. I'm really delighted. So great. And Jane Singer. Hello, Elka. Very nice to have you Thank as well. Thank you. Uh, Jane and the, uh, Lois. Uh, I'm thinking about Viola. I don't know why. <laughs> I think <laughs> it's Viola. Oh, I like that name, too. <laughs> <laughs> Jane and uh, Lois are uh, in the cast of uh, Gertrude and Company. In fact, they are. Gertrude and Alice. So, but we will get back to that a little later. First of all, I'd like for them to introduce, uh, uh, why don't you introduce yourselves to our audience, talk a little bit about your background, where you're from, and how you got into the world of theater, and uh, just in a nutshell, because we will go yes. on to it a little further. So, <laughs> Lois, why don't you start? Oh, okay. Well, I, I started when I was five, and I was actually started out to be a concert pianist, and I quickly found out that I enjoyed acting more. So at the Peabody in Baltimore, I took dramatic lessons. And from there on, I've been, since then, I've been acting. Went to dramatic school when I got out of high school and started doing summer theater work and some films and off-Broadway off and something on Broadway. And um, I've lived in Santa Fe, New Mexico, and have done quite a bit of work there and now. Here I am in Los Angeles <laughs> <laughs> with this great. great company, Jane Singer, and uh, who I've enjoyed so much working with in this play. Thank and you. And, uh, Thank you. I'd like to hear about you. <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, the feeling is mutual. Jane Singer enjoys having you as her companion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm originally from Virginia, and I spent many, many years from the age of 16 working at my craft. I was lucky enough to be able to work in regional theater, the Arena Stage in Washington, Actors Theater of Louisville, where we literally had to do everything from carry a paintbrush to sewing a costume to carrying a spear, and then when we were ready, given wonderful roles. So I consider myself fortunate. I've always done this, and it's my living, which is something I'm incredibly which, proud of. Which <laughs> is really great, yes. I think, nowadays, because uh, uh, not too long ago, in fact, it's been going on for quite some time, you hear about uh, women, uh, their parts and their roles in film and theater are, are quite limited, as well as sometimes the age comes into play. Yes. Have you experienced anything on that level? or? Uh, I, <laughs> I was just, it, what jumps to my mind is in the past year I have been involved with this marvelous theater company that is producing Gertrude Stein and Companion, and it's called the Blank Theater Company, and one of the marvelous things about the Blank Theatre Company is a man called Daniel Henning, who is the artistic director and a visionary. And Daniel set about things to make sure that women would have continually good choices of roles. Because as he described, when he began to audition and realized there were so many wonderful women out there of all ages, yeah. that uh, he made the decision to do so. So he was a great help to me in sort of reestablishing my confidence in the fact that, yes, there were women's roles available. Yes, you didn't have to be 23 years old right. in order to really find good work. Yeah. But in general, I think women are hard-pressed, certainly here. Do, would you agree, Lois? I would agree. But I, I do see a trend, too, I think, and more and more women are, are doing androgynous-type yes. right. roles. And right. they're also uh, doing plays that were primarily for men before and right. are now doing them 
as, as women, not necessarily imitating men, but doing it from a woman's point of view, right. taking the same right. role. Yes, in fact, there is a uh, play going on right now, uh, is, it's uh, Othello, and it's by the Los Angeles Women Shakespeare Company. Mm -hmm. I just recently saw that, and it's uh, wonderful how women portray the men, but from the point of view that you just mentioned, not yes. so much that they have to be men, but just to see or to feel. Uh, the, the masculine right. element. Exactly, right. exactly. Right. Also, uh, I think right now there are quite a few companies in town that uh, uh, have women plays, women companies, women yes. uh, whatever. And uh, I'm, I'm really excited about that because, uh, like you said, uh, Jane, um, women don't have to be 21 years old any no, longer. No. And I think to be able to inhabit the consciousness of a character, be it male or female, is the challenge. Not necessarily right. that we are so limited or so stereotyped By gender. that we, for instance, I've always had a pressing desire to play the fool in King Lear. Mm. And up until I think about three years ago, I was scoffed at for even the notion. Right. I think now it would be entirely possible. Oh, exactly. Something that is not necessarily a male domain. Right. right. In fact, so we were talking, Jane, we were laughing because we both of us would have always wanted to do a certain part in The, in the Tempest. Which yes, was Ariel the Sprite. She yeah. has always wanted to do Ariel, and I've always wanted to do Caliban. So I just by gum we're going to do it. <laughs> Maybe we'll even write our own play, you know, instead of Rose and Prance and Gilded and Sin are dead, we'll do uh, Ariel and Caliban live. You know, we could have a great time with that. Well, well yeah. see, that's, a lot, that's uh, how a lot of actors uh, <laughs> get their work, yes. by having to write their own play. Right. Like but that. I think the difference now is that women don't have to ask as much permission. Yeah. No, and, no. And I think that's glorious. Right. That's, that's and high right. time. Right. Oh, yes. Yeah. I, I so think our time has, has come. Exactly. <laughs> like we say, women have come a long way. Yes. And we're in the year of the woman, but I think we're in the decade of the woman and oh. will go on. I think yes. uh, women yes. are really in the limelight right now and uh, in, in uh, many aspects, and I think theater is one of them. But what about film? You both have done uh, uh, TV and film. Mm -hmm. I think there's a little, uh, I don't think you could literally, I mean, this is from my point of view, and I'm not in that field, but it seems to me that in film there is still that, uh, that uh, point, like a woman is a woman, a man is a man, and the macho end is more on the male side. Do you have any, do you feel that way? Well, or I think there's much more experimentation, and I think there have been, I think immediately of Victor Victoria, Oh, that's um, right. I forgot about that. And right. a couple of other films. I think there was something done recently, mm. um, an English film, about a woman, a sort of Shakespearean heroine slash male who right. also portrayed a male. And, and I think gradually, as permission is granted, permission will be given. And, yeah. and I think those are small steps, but I think even film is changing. I do, Don't too. You? I, oh, I certainly do agree. And I think, as in most things, it, it will start in an experimental way. Mm -hmm. That's right. And then eventually it will catch right. on and it will right. become, a, 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 you know, the, the way to go. The right. uh, suddenly I become obvious. True. But I, I think also uh, Victor Victoria was on a grand scale. Mm -hmm. I think what we're talking about right now is uh, more on that art film mm -hmm. level, yes. mm -hmm. right. where it's right. like theater where we can really go and uh, sort of practice and, and test the mm -hmm. water, right. mm -hmm. that sort right. of thing. Absolutely. Yes. Right. right. What, um, well, let's, let's go into uh, uh, the uh, Gertrude and uh, company or companion, mm -hmm. more or less, and uh, let's talk about that a lot. Now, there are two women that uh, were actually courageous, enormous, uh, full of gung-ho, one, a little bit more outward, the other one a little bit more inward. But you both talk about them because <laughs> you, Jane, play Gertrude yes, and do. you play Alice. And uh, from what I saw, it is one of the most wonderful productions thank I've thank seen. Thank and thank uh, you like I much. have praised Othello and I am praising oh, this well, play thank as you. well. And I, I'm, I'm saying this from uh, my heart. Oh. I was very taken in and it's, it's great. So talk about it a little bit. Well, I think I, 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 I would preface anything we would say that we did quite a bit of homework. We did a, we did a lot of research. I'm sure. And, uh, we were also aided very much by Daniel, uh, again. And uh, our director, Melanie. And our director, yeah. Melanie, uh, who is a woman. Right. <laughs> and uh, who, who, was, who was simply brilliant in her direction, I felt. I thought she just knew exactly what it should be from the beginning. 
and Daniel caught or had well he always has that that spirit that enterprising spirit anyway and he actually what is responsible for the paintings that you see in the play that are around there the portrait of Gertrude Stein and set the designs yeah. and the chairs that had actually been used in the salon in Paris and he reproduced those and, and uh, uh, I can't tell you how how, how marvelous mm -hmm. in, in detail he worked and how how privileged we are I think to have worked with these the producer and the director that we had that were behind all of there's this. a wonderful line in the play that says she created the background that made it all possible and that for me sort of defines the relationship of Gertrude and Alice that Alice was a helpmate a wife a companion a lover an inspiration and I, I believe that Gertrude for all of her braggadocio and all of her verve probably would not have been able to do what she did. I, I'm certain would not have been able to do what she did. Had not, she had Alice pushing her, cajoling her, bullying her, all the things that, that Alice did to make what was really a 30-year-long, incredible relationship. Right, right. So and a very much respected relationship yes, yes. by yes. their friends and uh, uh, yeah, by their friends. I mean, Hemingway yes. and uh, Picasso. And, and everybody and wanted to know them, and they, uh, and especially Gertrude, of yes. course, because they wanted to, to, to be in part of the literary scene of the, of the day, and, and also they, the art day. I mean, they knew painters. And, and yeah. Any, any, any of all and of And gave the many of the them. painters their starts. Right. Had yeah. they not exhibited the works of Matisse and Cezanne and Picasso mm -hmm. in their salon, right. who is to say how, how quickly the word would have been carried right. certainly to the to the United States. Right. Right. Now uh, I know you bought a little clip. Yes. And uh, uh -huh. Jane, can yes. you set it up for us? Sure. Maybe I can um, just sure. hold this up to the camera while you're setting it up. Well actually when and, uh, the clip begins, Gertrude is in limbo. In other words, she's dead. But she has inhabited the world of limbo so that she can come back, find out what Alice is doing keep the relationship going, and in some cases, agonize over Alice's plight, because Gertrude died, and Alice had many more years left on Earth, I think about a good 25 years from the time that Gertrude died until the time that Alice actually died. So at the start of the clip, Gertrude is in limbo, but present in the scene, and Alice is equivocating. <laughs> <laughs> so if we are ready with the uh, clip, we can uh, go. I can't make a decision. Yes. Sort of a decision. But not really a decision, because I'm not certain that I've decided. But I think I have decided that I want to go to heaven. Alice, are you mad? Because you, I think, will be there. That I will be in heaven? I think that what you are in now is a sort of limbo. Ah. Bernard Faye believes that eventually you will be released from the limbo and, and go to heaven. Bernard has been converted. He is a Catholic now. Oh. And he suggests that I should become one if eventually I would go where you will go. Go eventually. No doubt you see this as some sort of train's journey across the Pyrenees. Oh, no, not a train. I had to sit in the aisle of my luggage all the way from Nice to Paris. No, not a train. Then as we were in the Ford, during the First War, <sighs> Ah! Yes, that would be most charming. You sitting high up in the driver's position and me beside you. Issuing injunctions and commands. <laughs> ah! Well, you have no sense of direction. <laughs> and yours is certainly gone peculiar. Perhaps you're going senile. No. To him. Oh, you are getting older. Yes, I am old. I have been asked to do an article of Haute Couture of Paris for a magazine, so I know I am old. And with that, there's a connection. And they have to call the article 50 Years of French Fashion. Yeah. Do you suppose that there isn't anyone else alive whose memory goes back so far? Oh. All I can say for, to all of you viewers out there, this is uh, just an exciting, a wonderful play. But uh, let's go back to Jane and Lois and uh, 
let uh, them explain to us what they had to go through. Uh, there was a lot of research uh, behind this place, so uh, why don't we talk a little bit about what, uh, what got you going and, you know, how it came about. Well, I think we, we had stacks of books, of course. Yes. I mean, there's, there's yeah. an enormous amount of uh, material on the period, and as well as on the people, the individual people. So we did quite a bit of reading around the text. We read, we became familiar with Picasso and the different painters that they were, had been influenced by or had, had seen and bought, and opinions that they had bought. Um, I, in particular, was interested in, in Alice B. In Toklas's letters, which are, I think, truly some of the greatest letters in the English language. They are very witty and uh, with a very dry sense of humor throughout. And they are not only entertaining, of course, they helped aided me to acquire a character. And um, I, I think that was probably the primary influence for me. Um, Jane, I, I know you read a great deal as well. And yes, yes, I read a great deal. I had known about Gertrude as a public persona, but I wanted to snoop a bit do a bit of detective work and find mm. out a little bit more about her private persona. What was she frightened of? You know, did she have right. yeah. monsters in the closet? Yeah, because there's something about, for me, it was a role that I usually would not play. It's she, her physical being is far right. different than mine. So I was longing to inhabit her from the inside out and yes. find out where her frailties were. And uh, I, for instance, I worked with arm weights a good part of the oh, rehearsal period, right. just to give myself a bit of gravity, a bit of physical heft. Mm -hmm. um, and that was fascinating because it made me feel different. It made me feel uh, suddenly very self-conscious. Yeah. Um, I lost the small amount of poise that I do possess, <laughs> sort of and she blew away. Does possess a great deal. <laughs> <laughs> so it was an interesting character study and was also interesting to read about how very insecure she really was, and how, most of all, how incredibly lonely she was. Yeah. Until I think Alice I came into her yes, life. I, I think that, I, yes, Alice yeah. was more the secure one. Right. She was the anchor that, that could permit her to, yes. to, to flourish and to... to sort of fill that hollow leg for her. See, and, and the notion is, I think, with the audience or, you know, just people in general, we always, I mean, I used to think Gertrude was the, well, she is the dynamite, but yet, Alice is the strong person in the background to make Gertrude, or I think she made Gertrude, who uh, she Absolutely. was. Absolutely. Well, I think she did help psychologically, too, uh, to give her the security, mm -hmm. too, that she needed yes. uh, to but feel want, that right. she could be herself and be a woman, and, 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 and also to always remember with both of us that uh, in portraying these characters, these are people that were living at a time when women weren't even beginning exactly. to, to there be was women no on their own. No. No so they were really, you know. Yeah. Uh, right. But you know, I want to tell you, it came up, you, you, port you both portrayed the feeling. I, I got the message in the play how Alice was so influential on Gertrude and uh, her being, where as before, I, I used to think, oh, poor Alice. She was yes. so in the background. Yes. And uh, oh, not even at all. though, oh, no. even though <laughs> you also mentioned in the play quite a bit how Hemingway could only call Alice by uh, not her name, but by companion. Companion. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. But yet, you really uh, got it across how she was the one that pushed Alice with that quiet demeanor. And uh, yes. your strong personality, yes. and uh, now I'm thinking, uh, you said you had, you, you, you well, watched weights. your poise. Oh, I staggered uh, around with weights. And, and uh, I mean, I, I saw a, uh, um, a couple of years ago, they had something on, uh, on television about uh, Gertrude and uh, Alice, and uh, uh, it was wonderful, but to see the play, I really, I, I felt as if I was there. It was, huh. it was really... Well, thank you. That's I, wonderful. I, I, yeah. I think one of the, another thing we should, we should say, I mean, we did a great deal of research, objective mm -hmm. uh, work, but we also, I think, are both the kind of actors that we worked with each other oh, and, yes. and got out from each other and communicated uh, the 
their positions and their, their, yes. their roles. And every night we find something new. Every we night. We really love working we, together, yes. which is great because it's only the two of us. <laughs> right. <don't you? laughs> but, uh, and, uh, we're it that. is a delight. And, and it, it's always a little different. So it isn't just right. an intellectual, right. an intellectual yes. approach. It has been a, an acting approach yes. as well. We have, right. we have worked. Well, it seems to me that uh, when you are, quote, on stage, which it is a little bit different, and uh, for those of you who would like to see it, I, I hate to bring it up in this. In the, it, <laughs> it, it, the stage is just different. You kind of step into the living room, and it's, it's, you're kind of part of it. In and fact, it's, 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 it's like, yeah, you're, yes. you're, you're kind of there. Um, uh, I think it must be nice just to kind of the two of you. It's like you get together it's in home. the evening for, <laughs> for a tater tate or something yes. like that. Yes. Well, historically, they had a salon, Gertrude and Alice, every Saturday evening in Paris in the 20s. Well, actually, through, through the la latter part of the 10s, into the 20s, into the 30s, and actually into the 40s. But this salon was extraordinary and became very famous and eventually got to the point where you literally had to say who sent you. And if you were worthy of being <laughs> admitted, you were right. admitted, and you could see this incredible art. Some yeah. of, I, I guess, the most important art of the 20th century. And that's kind of amazing, yes. to be yes. recreating that part of history. Right. Yes. I love history, so that's exciting to me, very yes. exciting. Well, like I said, I, I, I enjoyed it tremendously, but we only have a couple more minutes. Let's go uh, back to uh, the two of you, and uh, uh, let's talk about what's in store for you. What's coming up next? Oh. Well, I, I've, I'm, I haven't really looked too far beyond this. I've been enjoying this so much, and I, I'm, I'm just not sure what what is next, but I don't know how, Jane, well, I, I think right now we're fortunate enough to have been told that we're going to extend the play, right. which is just yeah. cause for celebration as far as <laughs> I'm concerned. <laughs> then and uh, so that will be certainly my primary theatrical focus. Right. I'm also involved in writing a novel and um, other pursuits, but, but theatrically um, it takes a great deal of work and yes. energy and commitment, oh, yes. 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 and we never stop learning. Never, and, never. And, uh, yes, that's and a thrill. That is, that is a delight. It's, it's a wonderful thing in life when you can fulfill the thing that you, you feel in your heart and your soul to do. Yes. And you, you in, are in such a great vehicle to play right. to, to, to do In it. fact, I was gonna, going to ask you about, uh, do you have a wish list? And you just <laughs> kind of answered it a little oh. bit. But um, uh, are you uh, looking forward maybe to uh, go back to a film role or TV? Or I like, I like uh, film work a great deal. I, 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 I like that. But I, it's, to me, it's very it's, different. It's a different film right. and, and, um, and theater is always so alive right. at the it's, moment. It has to happen in, in the moment that, right. you're, that you are. And I think because together. choices are becoming more numerous for women. In certainly here, yeah. my, it's my experience right. that uh, who knows what's around the corner. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. thrilling, right. but right now we're happy to be yes. <laughs> the oh. couple that yes. we are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sure, yeah. I'm sure. Uh -huh. Well, um, uh, to sum it up, what do you have to, do you have anything to say to the audience? Uh, not so much about the play, but just uh, women in general in the theater. I think this is a, an extremely important play for women in the theater or for, uh, for people to see, to, to, to realize the importance of, of, the, of women in the 20th century because these are two pivotal characters right. mm -hmm. um, who did a lot of groundwork for yes. other people that are now able to do what right. they want to do exactly. and be who they want to be um, without fear. And, um, I, I, you know, I think from, from that point of view, alone, you know, it is, wor it is worth seeing. I think to women in general, particularly artistic women, never stop feeling hope because boundaries are falling away. Women are being given more and more opportunity in theater. Women are being given extraordinary chances to inhabit characters they may otherwise not have inhabited, thanks to companies like the Blank Theater Company. I'm sure there are others. And I think it's important to keep striding forward, however you stride. Sometimes you limp a little bit, sometimes it's, sometimes it's hard going, but there is ample artistic opportunity for yeah. women, and I would say Let's touch upon, important. just for a second, um, Melanie White, the director. Yes, I mean, she's she a wonderful She seems to director. have a great uh, uh, 
career. Yes. Uh, oh, I mean, I'm sure she she will. She's very young, but she is. She's just, already quite experienced. Yes. yes. She, yeah. And she's very much in demand, and she's yes. people want her all the time because I'm just looking so over the uh, the yes. uh, sheet, and uh, she seems to really have. Uh, come a long way and uh, yes. like you said it's probably going a long way how did, how did she come into certainly. play you uh, mean as a director as was your play was the uh, well I'm assuming that she was chosen by the artistic director Daniel Henning I'm certain that that's right. how it happened yeah. Yeah. and I think he felt that she was particularly suited to this piece because she's sensitive she's bright she is incredibly well read yes yeah. which was <laughs> important the first day of rehearsal she important. arrived with a huge stack of books that she could barely balance right. Here, here is the period, here is the time, and we all just sort of inhaled it. Mm -hmm. But I must say that she certainly set the tone for that. Yes. Right. And um, she's now directing Shakespeare yeah. in New Jersey, so she's, she's busy. Busy woman. Yeah. Well, we're all busy. <laughs> yes, yes. Fortunately. Okay, well, with that, we have to close it off for today. Mm -hmm. I want to thank my guest, Lois. And Jane, thank you thank very you so much, much thank for you coming so by. Much for I really us. enjoyed it, and I I, uh, I was really uh, wishing and hoping that uh, you could take the time out to uh, come down here and, thank and you. talk to us, thank the audience. And um, with that, I also want to thank the audience for joining me tonight. And I hope you had a wonderful time because I certainly did. I learned a lot about the theater, and uh, again, I was. Uh, uh, the uh, play Gertrude and uh, Companion was uh, an absolute must. And uh, mm -hmm. women in theater, we have come a long way, and it seems as though we are going much, much further. So uh, with that in mind, and uh, with another great women's issue next week, please tune in again, and until then, bye-bye. So... As vertebrates moved away from water, they developed enhanced ways to prevent drying, to exchange gases, to circulate.